Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. By far the most requested tutorial for me to do when I got back from the stamp show and did my haul was comparing these makeup style uh, blending brushes to the foam brushes and color dusters and things that I've used in the past. So I thought that would be a wonderful um, comparison. And I'm also gonna show you it with dye ink versus distress oxide, which is type of a type of like pigment ink. So this is the one I did at the show before I, I purchased the brushes. Uh, and I just thought it was such a beautiful smooth look that I would, um, that it was definitely worth adding to my arsenal. So we're gonna start off with dye ink. And I'm just gonna grab this one right here. It's about a medium size brush, I would say. Actually, I'll, I'll grab this bigger one here. The bristles are very soft and dense, and because the bristles are soft, you get a smoother look than, say, the color duster bristles, which are looser but coarser. So I'm just gonna start off, and you'll want a paper towel handy to clean your brush on, because you don't have a brush dedicated for everything of ink, or at least you don't need to with these. I'm gonna start with my lettuce color, which is the, um, which is this rose color, Regal Rose. I'm using Stampin' Up! pads because I had a viewer ask me specifically to use those, so I figured I would. And I'm just going to put a couple post-it notes down, actually, to prepare uh, to protect these other cells, and I'm trying not to get ink on. That way we'll get a nice comparison between all the different techniques. We'll get them compared side by side. So I'll just start in here. Ooh! It goes down so soft and smooth. Now the thing that I noticed when I was using these for the first time is that um, it takes longer than how I, it would take me with my color dusters. And that's what I typically use. So I'm just going to blend that out. Now I'm going to wipe this on my paper towel. And as you can see, most of the ink is being left on the paper and not uh, staying on the bristles, which is really nice. Uh, and I'm going to go in with this turquoise blue, tempting turquoise. I'm not even sure if those are... Um, current colors or not because um, I've had these for a long time. They're the old style linen pad so I also figured that well it's Stampin' Up! ink so hopefully that'll be helpful to that viewer that contacted me but um, most of your dye pads are that linen ink so I figured that would help. So now I'm going to wipe it again. Hardly anything on the napkin because that's what's what kept me from looking into these earlier until I tried them for myself was because I thought, well, I don't want to have one for every color because I have so many uh, blenders as it is. I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to go there. <laughs> I didn't want to get into some things going to take a lot of space to store. Especially if I didn't know if I was going to like them. And you can see the colors are still bright when I'm going color to color. They're still nice and bright. So I want a little more, maybe a little bit more green. Starting on the edge. They're very smooth. Now, notice how I'm holding this. These are really thin. I ought, I just like kind of naturally want to grab it by the end here. Um, and I think that uh, if you're holding it way back here, I think it's going to take... I think there's going to be a weak spot there and you have a chance of breaking these because these are not the life-changing brand name ones. These were from Double Trouble. I paid 20 bucks, and I'm pretty sure they're probably exactly the same thing as what you buy on Amazon for, you know, 8 bucks because that's what I used at the hotel was my friend's $8 set. Um... And, you know, I definitely want to grab it like this because I don't want to tire out my hands while I'm working. And I think if you have arthritis or anything like that, it would definitely be a good idea to go by the, um, go by holding the head of the brush like this. All right, add this uh, cobblestone. This is, so this is a Simon Says stamp color because I didn't have a good uh, soft gray. The only gray I had was basic gray and that's a, um, a permanent ink. So I didn't want to, uh, I thought it's probably best not to get like a permanent ink on these brushes. Okay, I think I want a little bit more. I also knew this pad was fairly juicy because I haven't used it a ton. I don't stamp with gray very much. All right, I'm gonna wipe that off on my on my rag. Okay, so this is what I had for leftover ink. That's not bad, and my brush is essentially clean and ready for whatever color. I'm just gonna set that on. Uh, I'm just gonna set this aside. Um, I am gonna try going into distress oxide, then back to dye to see if I do need separate inks. But look at that! Look how nice and pretty that is. Actually, I should save the reveal for the end, shouldn't I? Forget that. Forget. Forget about it. Forget about that gorgeousness. All right. So now we'll go over here and we will use our color dusters. And I'm just gonna protect that. 
it was so funny, like everyone went, oh, when I lifted up the stencil in the hotel room, it was so funny. Okay, so now I'm gonna use a color duster, and these are what I, I these are so fast. So we're almost five minutes in, so that first cell took me four, like four and a half minutes to do. I'll start off with my pink. Should I keep in the same colorway? I'll try to keep it in the same. Maybe I'll just do pink from the middle. That would be kind of cool. I'll just do pink. Okay, so I get a little more texture with this, but it is super quick. I'm gonna fade it out a little bit like that. So I think just because um, I tend to be kind of lazy and I tend to, you know, just want to grab something really quick and go that I will still use the color dusters most. These have been my favorite blending tool for like probably about six or eight years. Oh, I think I want a little bit more pink. These are by Judy Kins. They're basically like a shaving brush and they've got a much looser bristle, but they're coarser hairs. So they're going to give you a little texture. We'll go with our green next. I think it's old olive. So I feel like a lot of the a lot of the ink stays in the bristles of these, but I don't wash them. So they're there priming the bristles for the next time I want to use them. So it's not a bad thing, it's just different. And the other thing I like is that since these always have ink in them, if I just need to do the edge of a card or something and I don't need a lot of ink, I don't even have to get an ink pad out. I can grab my my blending brush that's the right color and just just slap it on there and call it a day. So there we've got that one. Now we're gonna do our sponges next. So we'll move this over. Oh, it's gonna be fun to see them all re revealed. Uh, so for sponges, I have my homemade daubers. Now you can use either a homemade dauber, you can use a Ranger store-bought dauber, you can use a um, like a color box stylus. It's basically all the same thing. I have the best luck with these, I think, because I kind of roll over the cosmetic wedge. I'll show you what those wedges look like, so I had to just make a new one because I didn't have a gray. I'm telling you, I don't use gray very much. Um, so I just take a cosmetic wedge, I roll it in half like that. These are like a pack of 20 for a buck at the dollar store, and I, and I glue it with hot glue into a bottle cap. That's all that is. Um, they're, they're so handy, and they last for years and years. So this one's probably 10 years old, honestly. So I'm going to start off the edge. I'm going to bring in that color. Wow, I'm actually getting a very similar look to the life-changing brushes here, or my faux life-changing brushes. Um, and keep in mind that this is well filled with ink because, you know, I just, I don't wash them either. Now we're going to go with our blue. I could use the blue and the ranger one since that's close enough. Why don't we just do that? Um, let's see, where do I have the blue coming from? From this side, I'll have that. Um, to be to be honest, I'm not that that uh, used to using these uh, Ranger ones. I'm very much more accustomed to my homemade ones. So if the, if I get some re weird edges or funkiness, I'm just not that familiar with these. And it looks like I might have used some actual some pink moon ink on there because I seem to have a little schmutz on my on my ink pad there. Uh, we'll do my green. I'll just wipe it off. It's not going to be the end of the world. Let's see my green. I think it doesn't really matter what side I come in with my green. Sometimes these uh, foams will break apart and you'll need to replace them, but it's just a new wake up makeup wedge. Just rip out the old one and glue a new one in. But I mean, years. I'm serious. You can go for years without having to replace them. And I'm going to grab this one's got a new one, so I might have to ink that up a little bit more. We'll see. Hopefully, there's enough on there. Yeah, I think so. That's pretty color. Okay, so let's see what we got. Oh, something else I wanted to just kind of, kind of show you really quick is um, I have these little these little brushes here. These are from um, Doris. They're very inexpensive. You know, what? I'll just I'll just do a little one over here, just showing these foams. These. Um, I use these more for like if I stamped an image and heat embossed it, then I could just pick up some ink and color it really quick with these because they come in different sizes and they work really good for that. I don't really use them over a stencil. I'm hoping that they're going to be, they're not going to feel like I'm, and I use them with chalk sometimes too, so they might be a little dingy looking. I kind of, I don't know if I like this technique because I kind of feel like it's kind of rough to do this 
on the, I'm not going to do as much because I feel like I might break apart the foam because the foam is not as dense. I feel like it's just going to uh, maybe shred over the stencil. So I, I would just use this for coloring stamped images just for, or just on plain cardstock, do a little kiss of color or something, but I would not use it for any heavy duty coloring. I just don't think it can hold up to that. They're very inexpensive though. And uh, for what they're, you know, what they're meant to do, they do a good job. But yeah, I definitely feel like I could shred them pretty easily. I don't want to do that, so we'll just do a little, we'll just do a little, just a little show and tell there. Okay, so I didn't want to cover that whole thing. All right, so now let's move our stencil and see what we have. All right, so I think this is pretty amazing, really. Um, with the makeup brushes, we definitely, that's with these guys, we definitely got the crispest image. I'm just, uh, I'm just going to zoom in. I'm so excited. Um, slurring. Um, so we got the most, the most uh, detailed stenciling with these brushes. We only needed one brush for all those colors, wiped them off in between. So if you are looking to buy these brushes, if you want to go whole hog and buy the life-changing ones, you could just buy one or two, one for your dyes and one for your pigments and be be good. Um, so that's nice to know. You don't have to spend 50 bucks on the set. This was a color duster, which I always thought I got fabulous results with, and it is kind of a soft and dreamy look, but it's definitely, definitely those bristles um, pushed a little ink under, either pushed a little ink under the stencil or didn't get in close, close enough, so I got a little bit of a, of a dreamy look, which is pretty, and that would be definitely um, applicable in a lot of projects. I also have more texture on the inking there than I do there. Um, this here is with a sponge. I have about the same finish there, but the colors turned out a little bit lighter and my lines are, are they look thicker because the sponge wouldn't get up tight under the stencil. So again, a different look. And then here with my little, um, with my little sponges, my little peg sponges here by Doris, I got, um, very similar. I got kind of a cross between the, those two effects. Actually, it's almost like a cross between the three, but it definitely is closest to the sponge effect. So, um, there we go with dye ink. I'm going to do it again with the stress oxide inks. You can stick around and you can watch or you can skip to the end if you want to. I don't mind. That's totally fine. You're not going to hurt anything if you do that. Um, you know, heck, you've been watching 12 minutes already. <laughs> All right, let's just uh, let's scoot out here. So um, I don't know if you noticed a big difference in how long things took to color, but um, but I definitely noticed the the, uh, the makeup style brushes took a little bit longer. I need another piece of tape and tape this down, grab my other ink pads and we'll be ready to roll. Okay, now we're going to try the same thing using Distress Oxide inks. I got this big brush here. I'm going to start off with my abandoned coral and start here in on the center. Ah, my post-it note is not, it's an old one. I should have grabbed a new one here. Okay, so to ink up, again, we do a little swirl with our brush. Since the brush is kind of tapered, um, I think that's why we get such a nice soft blend. I might have to use tape to hold that down. I'm gonna re reapply. Wipe off the excess, which there isn't a lot of. Really, can you even see it? I'm going with the blue. Ooh, I might have got a little too much. It almost feels like really, really juicy. I might have freshly inked that one recently. ink going on the sponge there. Go with green. Well, there's plenty on that one I'd say. And now we will go in with the iced spruce which is a pretty gray. 
And I'm just going to blend that in. Okay, now we'll wipe off what's left here and see what we have. Really not a lot on the um, on the rag there. I can see a little staining on here and I do feel like there's like I can feel the residue of that ink on there where I don't feel the residue of the ink at all from the dye inks. So it might be one of those situations where maybe like after once a month you need to wash your pigment brush if you're using it for pigments. I'm not sure. I definitely can feel like a little bit of um, of greasiness to that, like a little bit of glycerin or something on there. So now we'll try the color dusters with those inks and I do have separate color dusters for my um, for my pigment ink or distress oxide, I use the same. I don't use pigment ink all that much, so um, that's that's plenty for. You know, I just have a one for every color family, pretty much. So I'm gonna start in with our rose. The color dusters. I don't know if they pick up more ink than the um, the life changing or full life changing brushes, makeup brushes, but they. Um, but it could be because they're pre primed, because I have uh, I have color on there from before. We'll do our blue. And hey, whatever makes me waste less ink, I'm all for. So either whether it's staying in the brush till the next time I use it and reactivate it, or it's you know all going on the paper and there's just none that I have to wash out or clean out. Either way, I'm fine with that. With our green. It is much quicker for me to use a color dusters. I, I don't know if it's just because I'm used to them, but I think it's just because they put down a lot more ink a lot more readily and you don't have to reload it as often. And I don't know if you have to go with circles with the makeup style brushes, but with these I can brush back and forth, I can go in circles. There's not a lot of uh, restriction. I feel like you have to be a little bit more particular in how you put on your ink if you're using a sponge as well. We'll go to the sponge next. So you have to determine what kind of crafter are you a, are you a like quick and easy crafter? Are you a more meticulous, detail-oriented crafter? I'm definitely in the quick and easy camp. Maybe not necessarily quick and easy, but messy. I'm definitely kind of in the, the more artsy, messy, you know, non-meticulous, non-perfectionist camp. So now I've got my, these are my homemade um, Distress Oxide blenders. These are the same makeup wedges. I just glued them into the bottom of a glass chess piece because I thought that looked pretty darn cool. I grabbed way too much ink there. Holy moly. I got way too much. Maybe I should carry that blend. Well, I just got way too much on that. Let's, let's tap gentlier, more gentlier on that. This definitely absorbed, absorbs a lot more Distress Oxide ink than the uh, brushes do. We'll go with the green sponge. Dot, dot, not a lot, as your grade school teachers would say when you're getting glue out. Same thing with the sponge and Distress Oxide. Look at that on my tape. Holy cow, it was like a sponge full of paint there. Dot, dot, and a little bit of this. I actually really like the sponge look. I'm just going to wisp it so I can get a softer blend because these are really, really full. Okay, so one other thing I want to try here is actually going, seeing if this does clean it enough so I can go into a dye pad. And I'm just going to go into my, um, I'm just going to go into the clean part of this turquoise pad because I see I need to wipe off the, the surface anyway. So I'm not getting any transference on there because I just did it right here on the clean spot. Because remember I had that there from that other ink blender that I shouldn't have used apparently. So I'm able, I'm not transferring anything onto that part of the pad where... I just tried it, so I think that's I think that's good. I'm just gonna slap this stencil down here, so we'll see how it looks if I get that if I'm getting a weird texture or if it's fine. We'll see if it picked up. It looks like the blue is nice and and vivid. Um, I'm gonna wipe off that tape though because I had a lot of pink ink on that tape, and I didn't want that to to color my results. I'm not going to go all the way out. I just want to get that in there and see because I do have a little bit of color on the board of the stencil. I just want to see if I get texture on that blender if it's fine. I'm going to wipe that off. You know, there's not a lot of blue on there from the I really don't think you need separate ones for the for the um although 
You know what? I definitely can see how the bristles want to clump a little bit with where I've had the pigment where it didn't at all with the dye. So it might be a good idea to have a separate like applicator for your dye and your pigment, your your dye and your pigment inks. So I can see I can see that definitely not as um, much of a of a difference or need as you would with other blending medias. But um, so let's take a look here. What we have. By the way, I just used a smooth cardstock for this. So there we go. We have the Distress Oxide with the um, with the makeup style brushes. These guys here. That is the Distress Oxide. This is the dye. With the color duster, there's the Distress the Distress Oxide. This is the dye. So very uh, very similar. You see the texture there where it's smooth there. And there we have the like a foam sponge with the distress oxide. Distress oxide. I keep slurring that. I don't know why. Um, and there is the sponge with the dye based ink, just a stamping up and some of the stamp inks. And then this was me going from using the distress oxide, wiping my brush, and then picking up some dye ink. So if you want to look at that versus kind of that area there, which was the dye originally, still crisp lines. I can feel. I can feel the Distress Oxide a little bit on there, so this definitely is some res residual transference, but as far as the, how, you know, the look you got, I'll zoom in in a little bit, as far as the look, I think, sorry about the shake, I think it looks pretty, pretty good, but I definitely see how you'd probably want to have one for pigment and one for dye. I was thinking I would have to have one for warm and cool colors, and I still might, just so that, you know, if I'm going from yellow, I don't have to go right to you know, blue, but I don't even really think it's necessary. I mean, even this is all I was able to wipe off those brushes and they stay pretty clean. So I'm impressed. Um, these take, it takes a lot longer to do the makeup brush style coloring. So I probably would still grab a sponge or a color duster really quick if I'm just, you know, wanting to slap a little color down. However, if I want a extremely crisp stenciled image, you really can't beat that. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to help. Oh, one more thing I want to try. Let's try doing some clouds here. I want to do this. I'm going to do that on the back. Let's do that on the back of this paper because, um, and we could try it both with dye and distress oxide. Let's do, let's do the dye here. I just want to see how doing something like this where you're inking off a stencil, oh my gosh, and you've got the edges, you do get an extremely gorgeous smooth blend. So inking off a stencil where you just want, you know, where you're going to be. Flip it even. Yeah, that does give you a really just whisper, whisper fine blending. You really can't beat that, honestly. Even when I make a mistake and I start on the paper, I'm not getting like those hard edges like I would with another tool. I mean, that's gorgeous. Now we could do it, we could try it with the um, Distress Oxide. Just be careful if you're getting these inexpensive brushes about the neck. I would definitely support it by the head of the, um, of the blender. I'll start over here. I like the dyings better on these. I feel like it's not like with the Distress Oxides. I feel like it actually blends better with the dyes or it takes less to use a dye ink versus the oxides. Personally, I think you're going to you're gonna use less. Let's just take a look. I mean, that's a little bit softer of a look, but they're both really good. And um, hey, I'm impressed. I didn't think this was going to be something I was going to add to my stash. Here you can see with the Distress Oxides how the bristles are starting to pull apart. So, you know, you you might need to actually give them a wash every once in a while or keep them dedicated. But And I can find very, very small change in like cleaning. I can wipe a little bit more off from a Distress Oxide versus a dye ink. So I think that it's conserving your dye ink a little bit better than your Distress Oxides, just if you want to be very particular about it. Um, that's all I have for today. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.